Hey there, everybody. Shell Broadnax here with another episode of Stager Talk, and I am doing a series now of all the fantastic speakers that are coming up at RisaCon uh, this July uh, 21st through the 23rd, 2022 in beautiful Las Vegas. Uh, so my first guest is Luesca Nonan. How are you? I'm doing so well, Shell. Thank you so much for having me today. I am super excited. Um, your session is something I've been trying to find a speaker on this particular subject and the right speaker to be able to present this about diversity, um, equity, and inclusion. And your um, topic is uh, called Unconscious Bias, Don't Let It Steal Your Earning Potential. So we're gonna talk about that, a little bit about what you're gonna touch on Arisa Khan. But first, tell everybody, who are you? What do you do? What brought you to this point in your career? Okay. So um, I happen to be a Black Latina for the purposes of those that don't know. Um, my parents are Panamanian, so they came from Panama in Central America to the United States. So I'm a first generation American. And I have um, been raised in a Hispanic community and um, in Brooklyn, New York, Dave Brooklyn. Um, I went through undergrad at NYU, went to law school, and um, I have been an attorney for the last almost 20 years. Um, and I've also in that space been operating as a um, an internet, oh, sorry, providing support to IT companies in mm -hmm. all my years as an in-house attorney. I am providing primarily legal support to HR organizations and IT companies. And I have always operated in what I call white spaces. As an attorney, there are often times where I am the only um, person of color in the room or female in the room. And so I have gotten very comfortable with navigating those spaces. But in that, in that environment that I'm in and having grown up in a very diverse cultural space in New York, it's always been a challenge for me to try to understand how do I get more people that look like me in those spaces? How do we have conversations that um, allow the people that I'm interacting with to take another person's perspective besides just my own, because I've been able to garner respect as an attorney over the last couple of years. But I want, I want people to be thinking about what other people of color may think, what other people of color may want to do to advance their careers in these same spaces. And so in that vein, I started doing some work in the, the diversity, equity, and inclusion space. I started um, proposing some recommendations and, and initiatives specifically for the employer that I work for to begin to just move the needle to make sure that we have diverse representation within our organization, to make sure that we're creating opportunities for people of color within our organization to advance and, and just excel. And so that has given me opportunities to speak on different topics, um, mostly in the legal space. So I do quite a few bit, quite a bit of, quite a bit of speaking opportunities within the legal space, whether within law students or, or um, attorneys in uh, for CLEs. And then I've also done some now in a broader out space outside of the legal profession. And that brings me to our talk in July. Yes, this is awesome. I'm super excited about the subject matter because um, I think that a lot of people don't even understand what unconscious bias is. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a snapshot of what that really means? Yeah, I um, I don't want to give too much of my um, talk away, but um, for me, unconscious bias is um, the stereotypes that we all have in our mind that we that come to memory when we see someone, when we see someone or something that just triggers a thought, mm -hmm. and it's not a thought necessarily that may align with who we believe we are, right? We, we may not intend to be um, stereotypical about someone, right? We, it, that's, that's not our intent. That's not who we are. But our brain is just a supercomputer and it's wired to think about things and people just because of our lived experiences. So one of the things that I um, use it as an example is just when you're walking around out and about somewhere and you see someone, right? And you may not know this person. You may have some trigger in your mind, it tells you, oh, that person is this, or that person has lived this, this, this life, or that person is, has this job, right? It's a trigger. And so those are stereotypes. And, and many of them, unfortunately, are negative, right? Those thoughts that come to our mind about someone that we see without knowing, without even knowing them or speaking up, speaking to them, they are negative thoughts. And so that is an unconscious. It's not at the forefront of our mind. We're not doing it intentionally. And it's a bias because often it's a stereotype. It's a negative thought about an individual. Yeah, I, I you summed that up really well. Um, it is one of those things that I think if people it, take a few minutes to reflect, we all do it. We all do it. And that's that's the thing that I want people to understand. At, at, at the end of this talk, 
I don't want there to be shame about this, right? Because when we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, there's a lot of shame. Many people, particularly white people, they feel that they are being attacked in some way because of someone's position to advance diversity, equity, and inclusion. And a talk about unconscious bias, I need everyone to understand, applies to everyone of every color, of every shade, of every religion, and every diversity dimension. And we all have it. We all bring it to the table. It affects every decision we make. And um, it's okay. What's not okay is now that we know that there are thoughts that we have in our mind that's unconscious, that is triggered by things that we see and things that we're doing, we need to do something about it, especially knowing that it's a negative or stereotypical or biased thought that we're having about a person. Yeah. I think it's also important, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I am, but please do if I am, that just because somebody has if they sit down and they recognize that they have unconscious bias, it does not make you somebody that it's not, does not mean that you're a bad person. It does not mean that you are racist. It does not mean that any of those things. And I think for me, what I've noticed and what I've read over the years is that so much has been drilled in about the differences between uh, just the racial differences between people through the media. Mm -hmm. Um, And from the dawn of time of media, how people of color have been portrayed, the good guys, the bad guys, black hats, white hats, all of this type of things. You go back to Starsky and Hutch, you got, you know, the the, the Starsky and Hutch are the the cops and the drug dealer was the black guy. And so you're raised with all this and there was not any positive um, representation. Representation. And this is why those that term representation it, it matters. matters exactly because it does it means something it actually means something it and now today the amount of diverse television that is on tv everything it is that you see now it's like okay this is what things are looking like yeah. this is this is america and it warms my heart i know my husband and i we watch all kinds of shows mm-hmm. um we watch shows that have predominantly black casts. We love the shows. We do them. Power, we loved it. We watched the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last two seasons were like, yeah, you're getting a little off on that one. But they are all right. <laughs> it, got, it got a little no much in the last two. I'm not going to lie. But the first ones, and it was like, I'm with you is, on that. <laughs> we were like, this is good. This is good uh-huh. TV. Yeah. Got a little weird, but I digress. Um, but we have an appreciation for that. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, the more people expand their um purview exactly your opinions change about things absolutely yeah you're influenced by what you experience yeah what you surround yourself with yeah. you're absolutely right your comment about representation matters is critical I'll, I'll speak about that as well um and that's why there's such a windfall of conversation around representation matters now because now representations are positive, right? There's so much more positive representation of people of color and, 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 and people that are, um, not only just of color, because we do sometimes tend to think about diversity as only a race and ethnicity thing, but it's also about able body versus disabled people. I mean, and, and LGBTQ community. So it's, it's the, the spectrum of diversity dimensions are now being represented in a more positive way that enables people that may not have familiarity with those groups now have an opportunity to see them, especially on TV, as you mentioned, in a more positive light. And maybe that'll expand, as we talked about earlier, expand their perspective and their view about an individual to counteract the stereotypes that we have just seen over the course of time in watching TV and interacting with people. And maybe our interactions will be more positive. Maybe we will give each other a little bit more grace and maybe we will be able to squash the unconscious bias trigger that we often have when we're interacting with people that fall in those categories. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think also even within the LGBTQ community, which um, I'm extremely fond of, I have gay parents, I have two dads, um, love them dearly, cutest little people on the face of the planet. (laughs) Um, For me, that community is so close to my heart because I know Mm-hmm. what they have been through. I have, I, my dad's told me my call him dad, dad, and Papa T. My dad, dad has told me stories that he lost business because somebody, uh, and it was a celebrity. He's, mm-hmm. he's up there. It was a celebrity 
athlete mm -hmm. um, that refused to do business with him because he found out my dad was gay. I mean, cost him like a hundred grand um, in a business dealing. Yeah. And my dad's at now, how you, how you handled that with him. I was furious. I'm like, who is this person? I'm, he's like, it's like, babe, it was like 20 years ago. It's all right. And I'm like, but no, you don't want to, you want to defend them. And it's like, I'm going to go out and save the world. Um, but the way he handled it with himself was with grace. Hey, it wasn't the right deal for me. It's all right. It'll come back to me. And he handled, he chose to handle it that way, which I, I guess he was probably right. So. <laughs> he was probably um, right. Yes. Dad kind of knows everything. So. <laughs> that <Yeah>. they do. <laughs> um, so how is it that people can, if once they start to recognize their unconscious bias, what's the first thing that they should do when they recognize it to want to change it? How do you process that? I believe in taking a beat, like literally stopping and pausing for a moment, just pause. Like if you're in a space and you see someone and there's a trigger, a thought that comes to mind about that person and you don't know that person, you've got to check yourself, literally stop and say, ah, I don't know this person. Where is that thought coming from? Right. And do some self-reflection. Where does that thought come from? Because I don't know that person. What is it about that person that's triggered me to think that? And, and you will find over time, if you do that practice enough, then you will no longer, you won't do it as much. Let's say that. But you'll also be mindful of where, tracing it back, where the thoughts came from. Maybe it was a TV show. Or maybe, I mean, sometimes some of us have grown up with parents that, that have not had as expansive a view as, as some of us have today. And so maybe it's because of comments that our parents have made around the kitchen table about those type those types of people right yes and so it's important to trace that back to just ask yourself where is that because if it's not my own personal experience like if i did not have a bad experience with that person that specific person then why do i feel that way about that person what is it that's giving me the the authority to think that about that person because oftentimes your thoughts trigger an emotion right so if you think about a, a person a certain kind of way you immediately feel something about that right and so you've got to ask yourself, where is that coming from? And so that is the first step that I tell everyone to do is just take a beat, just literally capture it. That's what I say in my talk. I capture the thought, like before it even really gets out there and you even act on it, right? Because again, there's a visceral kind of emotion that your body may attach to that, that, that trigger, yeah. catch it, hold it. And, and do some self inventory, ask yourself where that comes from. Why do you feel that way? Why are you thinking that? And then just accept it because it is what it is. You, you've had the thought, but then commit to doing better. Commit to recognizing, oh, that's not even a thought because of an experience I've had. That's someone else's feeding me that information. I can't own, I shouldn't own that. And if it is a personal interaction, right? So if you've had a bad experience with people that fit in a particular classification, you recognize, oh, I feel that way because I had a bad experience with a person that, that looks like that. Then yeah. you check yourself again and you say, okay, I own that experience, but I recognize that that individual that I'm seeing today is not the same person that hurt me or did me wrong before. I need right. to put that at the foot of the feet of that individual, right? And give this person grace because they had nothing to do with that, right? You've got to do that self-reflection. You've got to do that self-evaluation. And if you do it enough time, you will then begin to interact with people on an individual level and not on a group classification level. Yeah. You just can't paint everybody with the same brush. Aww. You know, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair to you. The other thing too, that I've noticed too, is that um, even when you're hiring <sighs> people within your business, yes. it yes. was, it's, you know, if you can bring on people with different backgrounds, I mean, we always say you know, our philosophy here is we, we're a big brain child at Reese mm -hmm. HQ. A little, we all have a little piece of the brain. Yeah. We got a few pieces missing right now. So we're hiring three new people and we're gonna hire the people that have the brains parts that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And so when you're looking at that from a skill set point of view, also from somebody's background points of view, who are they? Where do they come from? What other flavor can they bring to your table? Mm -hmm. To have a, a diverse staff. I think could only just benefit and grow your business. Absolutely. And hiring is a critical component of, of um, em employee management that um, 
really can be a place where unconscious bias drives a train along the tracks or just makes it topple over yeah. because um, I have done some training and, and have seen some spaces where employers don't do a good job of putting practices in place to ensure that their recruiters or even the folks that are doing the interviewing are not bringing their own bias to the table. Right. And so there are things that you can do from um, making it a blind interview process or rather a blind recruiting process where um, applications are sent in without disclosing the actual name of the individual. Because some names, Luaska, might cause folks to think mm, that person may be ethnic. Right. And so if there, there are things that you can do like that, you can have an interview panel that's diverse. Right. You can have scorecards that strictly focus on the skills and not the extraneous things that come out in conversations in an interview to make sure that you mitigate the risks that someone's bias is going to be part of the decision practice. Like those are the, you've got to do those things because in hiring, it's rampant for um, unconscious bias to just be evident. Yeah. I think, um, I think your session, I'm so excited about it. Um, and I really appreciate you coming all the way from North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina. We're going to be flying out at the same time. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? We might end up on the same flight. Yeah. Um, no, actually we won't. Cause I'm coming a week early. So okay. <laughs> a lot of days later, that's right. They've got jobs for me to do when I'm there. I'm coming in the Tuesday before, okay. um, but I'm super excited. I cannot wait for it. Um, and as far as, you know, diversity, and we're talking about, um, these subjects now I'm absolutely thrilled that these topics are now being discussed. Mm -hmm. And I always challenge people say, you know, you don't, you don't have to do the deep dive. You don't, you can, if you want, and that mm -hmm. we applaud it, dive yeah. all you want, jump off that building and do it. But little steps, just a little bit at a time. And mm -hmm. it's amazing just how much those uh, stereotypes can be broken down. And when you go back and, and changing your language and sayings that people say that. Yes, yes, yes. I had, I, to, I had to check my partner the other day because he made a comment about it. And I looked at him, he said, I'm sorry. And I said, you should know better. Like, that's not okay. <laughs> I will, I will, I, I'm 53 years old. And I just learned something the other day that I was like, why would I not know that? I was, I was so embarrassed for myself. Um, and it's like, I, that can never be said. And it's like, you just, and now it's like, I'm Googling lists of things that I cannot say because you literally don't know. And that's when, you know, when people talk about white privilege, it's people have just misunderstand it so much. It doesn't mean that you were born up with a silver spoon in your mouth. It's not what this is about. It means that you don't walk around and have the same yeah. type of experiences. When I get pulled over from the police, I was talking to a friend of mine who is black and we were talking about this. And I said, when I get pulled over, I'm worried about getting a ticket. If I'm going to get a ticket and if yeah. I can, how you doing? get out of my ticket and my black girlfriends yeah. were, are they getting their goal? They, what she said was our goal is to, to go home. home to get home. That's the goal. That's the goal. Such a different experience. I was going to make another point. I can't remember what it was, but anyway, I'm Googling, you know, all these phrases you can't say, and you, you just, people just don't know. I've said some stupid things yeah. and even in the horse world, I do horses in the horse world. There are things that should not be said low man on the totem pole. That's indigenous. And it's like, and I just recognized that about seven months ago. Yeah. And it's like, how do we now refer to these horses? Because that is part of the our the equine community. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely a statement that's said within the community. Everybody says it when you're describing the horse with that is the lowest in the herd community. The herd community. Yeah. So it's like, this is the wimpiest horse on the, on the, uh, this is the wimp. I, I trust that you're going to come up with the term. And I'm going to come up with something. I'm going to get it out there. I've been thinking about it for a while, but it is, it is amazing, yeah. but little steps, baby steps. So anybody out there that is um, diversity, equity, inclusion has, has come across your purview and it's on your plate. I challenge you to read a book. Um, podcasts, easy. podcasts, listen to cod podcasts when you're on the road. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, do a book, uh, White Fragility is a book and it's on audio. You can play that while you're going somewhere. Just little bites, just, just to open up your brain, take a trip. 
travel abroad, not right now, but travel abroad at some point and um, see when you go to Europe and there's, you see all the diversity. Um, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so I challenge everybody to do that. I, I thank you. We're at the end of our time. Okay. But I, I so appreciated this opportunity. Thank you so much. This has been great. I, yeah. I'm looking so forward everybody to else, get your ticket for RisaCon. Sign up for this session. It's going to be fantastic. And of course, you can choose all the other sessions to see live. And then, of course, you're getting all of the sessions recorded on demand. So when you go back home, anything that you missed that you couldn't see in person, if you want to see the recordings of it, you'll be able to take care of that too. Until next time, everybody, happy staging. Happy staging.